Hi, I'm Sean Carruthers, and welcome to How Do I on Butterscotch.com. This series, we're taking a look at GarageBand on the iPad. In this episode, we're going to take a look at basic song setup. Now, if you want to, you can just dive right in and start playing on GarageBand. You can just play without worrying about creating songs and recording. You can just play along with the keys or the guitar or whatever you want and just have, uh, have a bit of fun. But you can record. We'll show you how to do that in a later episode. First, we're going to set up the song on this so that you can be ready to do that. And then we're going to take a look at some of the instruments in upcoming episodes so you understand how they work before we start the recording process. Now, when you're working with GarageBand, there's a few elements of the song you're going to want to set up ahead of time to make sure everything works the way you want. The first of these is the tempo of the song, and the other is the key of the song. These will affect how everything works in terms of smart instruments, how it works in terms of the speed, how the loops work, and all that sort of thing. So we'll set up a few of those things first. First, let's click the wrench in the upper right-hand corner of the screen, and it'll give us a few options that we can adjust here. First of these is the metronome. This actually plays a little beat in the background, so you know when the song is recording where the beat is supposed to be, and you can play around with that. So either play to it or play against it, whatever works for you. But it does let you know where the beat is supposed to be in the project that you're working on. You can turn that off here if you really want to work freestyle, or you can adjust it to a different sound if the sound that comes with it, which is the wood block, annoys you. So you can set it to a hi-hat or a click, for example, if that actually makes you feel more comfortable. Next up, there's an option for count-in. So when you're starting recording a song, it'll actually give you four beats before it actually starts officially recording. If you just press record and it just starts, obviously you can never hit the first beat exactly that way. So the count-in allows you to figure out where the first beat is going to be by giving you one full bar beforehand so you can hit the first beat right as it happens. Further down, we have the option to change the tempo of the song. Now, this is the speed, so if you want a faster song, you would move this up. If you want it to be slower, you would move this down, and then click the button to set the tempo. Once this is set, of course, all of the other elements of your song will click into place. So if you have a smart keyboard that you're using, for example, that's automatically playing for you, and we'll show you that later on, then it'll play it at the right speed to match your tempo. Now, with the iPad's smaller screen real estate, one of the ways they've gotten around this and made it more manageable for you to use is by setting up sections on the song. And this is the little puzzle piece on the corner. So when you're using the Macintosh version of GarageBand, it's just freeform, and you can actually just keep going and going and going. You can actually set up small sections to repeat, but in general, you'll keep rolling through until you get through to the end. On this one, it sets you up in blocks of 8, 16, and you can adjust this as well. So it'll start in those little smaller sections and work in those, and then it'll loop you back to the beginning of that section. By default, the section is going to be 8 bars. Now, this may be too short for you or too long for you for the first section you want to work on. And when you tap through, it'll give you the option of lengthening them or shortening them. It'll give you the option as well of adding extra sections. So if you know there's going to be several different sections, several different movements in your song, you can add as many as you want here. You have the ability to add a new one and then set the length of it, or you have the ability to duplicate one you already have. So if you have sections that are going to repeat, you can just duplicate it again. You also have the ability to set your sections as automatic. So if you do want to go freeform like you did in GarageBand and just keep recording until you actually hit a spot where you do want to stop, it'll keep track of that for you and then automatically stop when you're done. Once you have more than one section in place, you can toggle between them by hitting the puzzle piece and then moving to the one that you want by tapping on it. It'll actually change everything that's on your screen to that new section. You also have the ability to select all sections, so if you want to see the song as a whole, select that and it'll put everything on your screen at the same time. Another thing you may want to set up ahead of time, especially if you're not a stellar player in terms of your timing, is quantization. So quantization takes your input as you're entering things onto the keyboard on the screen and then sets it to the closest beat. So you hit the icon in the top right that looks like a set of mix board sliders. And then you'll select a timing value. The higher the number, say 1 over 64, that means it'll play more of what you do closer to what you originally played. The lower that number, say 1 over 4, it'll actually slide your things around more so that they hit the beat more. Now you don't want to slide this up too high because then your playing might actually sound a little bit robotic. In fact, it might not capture all the notes that you want to play if you set it right up to 1 over 1. That'll only play one note every bar. Well, that's it for some basic setup. In the next episode, we're going to start talking about the software instruments we have on GarageBand for the iPad. We'll show you how to start playing them. For the show notes on this and the other parts in the series, you can go to butterscotch.com.